Today on Macaulay Math, we're doing parent functions and transformations. Intro. Okay, good day. I'm Professor McCulley. This is Math 150 Pre-Calculus Lesson 2 on Parent Functions and Transformations. Our goals for today. We're going to recognize common parent functions and their equation. We're going to use vertical and horizontal shifts and reflections to graph functions. We're going to use non-rigid transformations to sketch graphs. This lesson discusses the concept of parent functions and how we can use rigid and non-rigid transformations to manipulate these functions. The purpose of this lesson is to help the mathematics student visualize the graphical shape of the functions that they are using. Having an idea of what the function looks like before any type of manipulation can help a mathematics student to both interpret the quantities contained in the application as well as to help you see when there are errors in your results. Let's get started. All right, let's take a look at some of these parent functions. And what we're trying to do here is just to kind of give you a general idea of what the shape of these graphs are before we talk about any transformations that might occur to them. So we'll shift over here to Desmos and we'll talk about that first function, f of x equals c. So f of x is equal to c means it's just a constant. So if I put in say four there, you can see that I have a constant function at four. So f of x equals c is always going to be just a horizontal line wherever that value of c is. The next one, f of x equals x, is just a simple linear equation. The slope, the m value is one, and the y-intercept is zero, and we can see that every time I go up one and right one, I'm going to have a point, two, two is a point, four, four is a point. And so there is the simple f of x is equal to x function. The function f of x is equal to x squared, that is our simple quadratic, two, squared. There is my simple quadratic. It passes through the x and y axis at 0, 0. The simple absolute value function, and if you want to enter absolute value, you should look at your keyboard here, and it is the second function of the forward slash key, which is just above the enter. So if you go shift and then that forward slash key, you'll get a vertical bar. You can put in X and then put that second one in. And here we see the simple absolute value function. And remember, when you're doing absolute value, absolute value means that it is the distance from zero to that number. So the distance from negative four to zero is four units. The square root function, and if you wanna type in square root, you can do that two different ways in decimals. You could come down here and bring up the keyboard and use the square root key. That'll give you the square root. Uh, another way that you can do it is you can just type in SQRT and it'll give you that. And so the square root function X is that. And what you notice, there are no negative values that are graphed in this particular function. That is because you can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real result. So the domain of this thing is the first limited domain that we've encountered so far. And so the domain and range are equal for this. And the domain of the square root function is x is greater than or equal to zero. And the range of the square root function is y is greater than or equal to zero. Next, we have the cubed function and I enter x to the third, and you can see that we get a graph that, whereas the square root function had a domain and range of just x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero. The domain and range of this one goes back to all real numbers, and you can see if I take, let's say, negative one and I cube it, I get negative one out. If I take negative two and I cube that, I will get negative eight. And so this one goes up and down very quickly. And last on our list is the simple rational function one over X. If I type that in one over X, you'll see that I get this funky looking thing 
where I get I don't have a continuous function. I have a discontinuity here at zero. And if you remember, you cannot divide by zero. So one divided by zero is undefined. And so we have this thing called an asymptote when we have a division by zero. Now, many times when you divide by zero on a graph, you will get a asymptote, but you don't have to get an asymptote for certain special cases. And we'll talk about those later. Let's discuss the transformations that we're going to talk about in this course. And so the transformations, stretches, and reflections, if I have a function and I add a constant to it, that is going to be a vertical translation of whatever number C is units up. If I add a C to the variable before we do the function, that is going to be a horizontal translation C units left. And that is kind of one of the oddballs. When you do a transformation to the variable before the function, it's usually going to do something that is opposite to what your intuition is going to have. So normally we, when we add, we're thinking going up or going to the right. But when you add to the variable before you do the function, it is going to go in the opposite direction. And if you have a question on that, I can discuss it in more detail in class. If you take the variable and you make it negative before you do the function, that is going to be a reflection about the y-axis. If you take the function and make it negative, that'll be a reflection about the x-axis. If you multiply the variable by a constant before you do the function, that'll be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over c. And again, multiplying you think make bigger, but again, if you do it to the variable before the function, it's going to be opposite of what you think. Whereas if I multiply to everything after I have done the function, I'll get a vertical stretch by a factor of C. These first four are our rigid transformations. They do move the function into different directions, but the shape of the function remains the same. Here for our non-rigid transformations, we are changing the shape of the graph either by a horizontal or vertical stretch. So elementary example, determine the transformations from y equals x squared. y equals x squared is our parent function to these given functions a, b, and c. And then we'll use Desmos to verify our results. So the way I am going to teach you how to determine the transformations and get them in the correct order the way we're going to do it is we're going to pick a random number, plug it in, and discuss the transformations as we are evaluating that function. So as a for instance, I am going to say let x equal to 5. When I plug 5 into this first function, the first thing that I'm going to do to that 5 is I am going to subtract 2. So that subtraction of 2 before I square it, squaring is the parent function, so I am adding negative 2 to the variable before I do the function. That is going to mean this is a horizontal translation, but because c is negative, that is not going to be left, but it's going to be right. This thing is going to be a translation to units right. And so I can back that up by going to Desmos. And there is our original function. And so we'll call g of x our transformed function. And we'll go x minus 2 quantity squared. And we can see that that has been translated two units to the right. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Here, I have the function g of x is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 2. And so again, I see two transformations here. But let's figure out what the order of those transformations are by plugging in. So again, let's let x equal to 5. The first thing I'm going to do that, it is just like an a, I will be subtracting the 2. So I'll have a translation 
two units right and then I'll square it so now I've done the function and then after I've done the function I will be adding two units to it and so if you'll notice here there is my function there is an there I am adding a constant and so that is going to be a vertical translation C units up and so in this particular case the second transformation will be a translation two units up and if I go back to Desmos and I go back to this original and I add a plus two there you can see that it has been translated two units to the right and two units up all right this last one has three transformations and so again I have that minus two first and so we'll go translate Then after I have subtracted two, I square, that's the original function, then I make it not negative. So since I've done the function and then make it negative, I am having this reflection about the x-axis. I am making the function negative. So it is a reflection And then after I have made those y values negative, I'm going to add four. And so that's similar to this plus two that we did in the second one. And that is going to be a translation four units up. So we'll go back here. If I change this and I put a negative out front there, and I change this to a four instead of a two. We can again see that this zero zero has been translated uh, two units to the right, four units up, and then I have that reflection in the x axis. All right, next example. Use the graph of f to draw the following transformations in the same window. So I have this collection of line segments is the function. It's not defined by an equation. It's just given to a graph. My first transformation says y is equal to take f of x and subtract 1. Now I'm doing a and this minus 1 is going to be a translate 1 unit down. Now we can do this a number of different ways. First, let's think about the endpoints of the line segments. So this point right here is at negative 2, 3. This point right here is at negative 1, 1. This point right here is at 2, 0. And this point right here is at 3, negative 1. So one way I could do this is to think about translating points. So my original graph has the points negative 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 2, 0, and then 3, negative 1. My new graph, if I'm subtracting 1 and going one unit down, that means that only the y values will change. So in the new graph, I'll have negative 2 for the x value, but this 3 has to be translated one unit down to 2. Negative 1, 1, the negative 1 for the x value stays the same, and the y value is translated one unit down. The 2 stays the same, the y value is translated one unit down. The 3 value stays the same, the y value is translated one unit down to give me negative 2. So we'll do that one in red, and we will just connect the points so I'll grab my line segment here, I'll change the value to red, and we will draw that in. So here at uh, negative 2, 2, and then negative 1, 0, and then from negative 1, 0 down to 2, negative 1, and then 
3, negative 1 becomes 3, negative 2. All right, so there is my A function. I'm going to erase this. I wouldn't erase it on your paper, but I'm erasing it just for space. I'm going to leave my first set of points because I'm translating from my first set of points. So if I'm doing B here, I see two transformations. I see this minus 2 on the inside, so that's before the function. So in my mind, minus 2 is going to be a horizontal translation, C units, in this case, negative 2 units left, or 2 units right. So I'll come back here, and I'll say my first translation is translate 2 units right. And then this negative on the outside of the function, if you look back here, negative on the outside is a reflection about the x-axis. All right, so let's look at what would that do to my table of values. So my new xy, all right, if I translate two units right, that's going to change my x value um, by adding two to it. So here, this negative two will become zero. This negative one will become one. The two will become four. And the three will become five. Then if I'm reflecting in the x-axis, I am going to change the sign of the y values. So 3 becomes negative 3, 1 becomes negative 1, 0 stays 0, and negative 1 becomes 1. So I will connect the dots here with a um, green line. And so if we look here, 0, negative 3, is here and we're going to take that to one negative one right there then we'll take one negative one to four zero and then we'll take four zero to five one and that looks to me like i have a translation two units uh, to the right and i have a reflection in the x-axis so if i go right one two and then I reflect in the x-axis, I'm in that point. And I can do that with all of them. All right, next question. Example, for the following graph, they want us to identify the parent function, describe the transformation, and write the equation of the new function. But they're telling us that there is a note that all of these transformations are rigid transformations. Therefore, we don't have to worry about either of these last two. All the transformations have to be these things. So the first thing I would do is I would identify that parent function. And in this case, A, I have this little graph here. And the only graph that had a limited domain was the square root function. And this thing definitely looks like a square root function to me. So I'm going to say my parent function is y is equal to square root of x. And then I'm going to talk about my transformations here. And it might be helpful if I go back to Desmos and I put in that parent function. And I put in that parent function. And I look at it in the context of this graph here. And I'll notice that this point zero, zero has been translated to this point here, three, zero. So right off the bat, if I'm describing my transformations, I see that this is going to be a translation three units to the right. Now that I've dealt with this transformation from zero, zero to three, zero, you will notice that in the parent function, it starts at zero and goes to the right, but we need it to go from three zero to the left. That to me is a reflection in the y-axis. 
Now, here's the thing. I picked this particular example because it shows us that even though we get them in the right order, we do have to consider what's happening. Most students get this question wrong, and I'm going to show you what most students do and why it's wrong and why you should always check your answers at the end. So if we think about it, I know that my parent function, so my new function here, we're going to go square root, we're going to put our x. Now I need to translate three units to the right. So if I go back up to this list, and here's my horizontal transformations. If it were left, I would add three to it. And since I want to go to the right, I am going to subtract three. So right off the bat, I'm going to come here, I'm going to put my minus three. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. But then if I want to do a reflection in the y-axis, well, if I come up here and I say, I need a reflection about the y-axis, I just need to make the x negative. Now, most students, what they'll do is they'll come down and they'll say, okay, I'm going to put a minus there, and I'm done. But if we look at what that thing looks like, if I type it in, so I'm going to come down here, and we'll go g of x is equal to square root of negative x minus 3. You'll notice I get that transformation that way, but I don't have it at 3, 0, which is what I need to do. Now, why is that an issue? Well, notice what's happening in these transformations. This is an addition, and this one is a multiplication. And if you remember your order of operations, when you evaluate, do your multiplications before you do your additions and subtractions. You follow your please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So technically, this multiplication by this negative x is above the order of operations before this minus 3. So for us to get it in the right order with a translate of 3 units right first, what we need to do is put parentheses around that. And now this thing says subtract 3 first, and then after you've done that operation, do the minus. Now, this is fine. But we can simplify that, and I will simplify that by distributing the negative to both terms. So I have negative x and now plus 3. And so if I go back to the graph and I change this to plus 3, now I see I have the correct graph. So just be careful and check your answers. Next example, describe the graphs of g relative to f are using a graphing utility. So here I am going to say that f of x is x to the third minus 3x squared plus 2. Now this is not a parent function. We can still do transformations relative to any function. Now they're going to let us use a graphing utility to do this. And Desmos really does this well. So let's go to Desmos. Let's delete all of this stuff and rewrite f of x is equal to... Now, let's go to Desmos and plug this in. We see that f of x is equal to x to the third minus 3x squared plus 2. They want us to describe the graphs of g and h relative to f. We could do that using those transformations, but if you look, Desmos allows us to go g of x is equal to, and then because I've already defined what f is, I can type in f of x minus 1, and we can see what that is actually happening. So my original f function is in black, my new translated function is in red, and that is translating one unit to the right. So I can say that this one is going to be a translation one unit right. And we can do the same thing with an h function. So if they want us to find h of x is equal to f of 3x, we can come down here and say h of x is equal to f of 
3x. And we can see that, again, I'm going to turn this red one off and zoom in a little bit. We can see that the black function is our original function, the blue function. And this point here, we'll just pick at random, has been moved from 2, negative 2 to, let's see what that is, 0.667 comma negative 2. So it has been shrunk by a factor of one third. So we can see that this is a horizontal by a factor of one third. Next example. They give us this function, g of x is equal to 1 over x minus 7 plus 4. And they want us to identify the parent function. Well, that's pretty simple. If I look back at my list of parent functions, the only one, the only one that even makes sense is this f of x equals 1 over x. So we will go... Um, y is equal to 1 over x, and then we'll describe the transformation. So for part b, we'll say, all right, if I plug in, say, x is equal to 5, what's the first thing that happens? Well, I subtract 7 from it, and so that is going to be a translation. 7 units right, and then... 1 divided by that result is the function. And then I'm going to add 4 to it. So this is going to be a translation. 4 units up. That's my part B. Sketch the graph by hand. Okay, so let's take a look at what the graph will look like here. If we go back to Desmos and we take a look at the parent function, we see that we have this gap here at 0, 0. But you'll also notice that the function tends to go to 0 as it goes up, and it tends to get closer to 0 as it goes down. And as I go to an extreme, as I go to positive infinity, the function also looks like it's going to 0. And as I go to negative infinity, the function looks like it's going to zero as well on the y-axis. So if I'm changing that seven units right and four units up, when I go to do my graph by hand, what it's going to look like to me is I'm going to go seven units right. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the x-axis and we'll go one, two, three, four, on the y-axis and I'm gonna put in some dotted lines just to guide me here and so at 4 and let's move that so it's a little bit closer to 4 and then we'll go at 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right there I'll get that a little closer to 7 and so now I've moved those points so that when I draw in my graph, I can make it look like the original graph that has been translated seven units right and four units up. All right, last example. All right, identify the parent function. Well, I've got some absolute value symbols. That makes part A fairly easy. I'm going to say my parent function is y is equal to absolute value of x. Let's describe the transformation. So for part B, the first thing I'll have is um, minus two. So I'll say that I'm translating two units right. And so my half out in front here of the absolute value, if I go back to the transformations. 
If I'm multiplying by a factor on the outside, then it is a vertical stretch by a factor of C. And so in this case, that is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of one half. And then I have the minus three on the outside. That is going to be a translation. Three units down. And if we go back to Desmos and we look at the general parent graph for f of x equals to absolute value x, we see we have this. And so if I want to translate it two units to the right, this point at zero, zero comes over to two, and then translating three units down, I would go down to three. So the zero, zero point goes to there. Now, we haven't dealt a whole lot with vertical or horizontal stretches, but stretching vertically by a factor of two is gonna look like it's compressing it. It'll be half as tall as the previous one. And so, again, if I'm making a general graph, I will move two units to the right. So, one, two, four on the x-axis, one, two, three, negative four on the y-axis. And we know that we have to be at two, negative three is that first point. Now, in the original graph, it goes up one, right one, up one, right one. But with the half out in front, it's just going to go up one, right one, two. So my next point here will be at four, negative two, just like this point right here is two, negative three. So I'll go up one, right one, two. And that point will be at zero, negative two. And I'll just connect my dots here. And if I go back to Desmos to check my work, and I go G of X is equal to one half, and then absolute value X minus two, minus three. You can see that we have a similar graph and notice zero negative two and four negative two are the points that I came up with. Finally, it says use function notation to describe the transformation in terms of the parent function f of x. So essentially what that is, is the same as what we have done right here, where they use, they've used the function notation to describe the transformations. So finally, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to say, all right, and so this was the result of C, and we'll go D here. And so I want to do the parent function F, we'll say G of X is equal to F of, and since I want to translate two units right, I'll go X minus two, the vertical stretch by a factor of a half, we'll put a half out front, and then the translate three units down will be a minus three on the outside. We'll put a box around that. We'll call that done. And that's it for today. I know that was a long one, but you made it through. And so the Star Wars fun fact of the day, the TIE Fighter sound effect is a highly modified elephant trumpet. So they recorded an elephant trumpeting and then they put a bunch of different filters and effects on it, and they got our TIE fighter sound. Well, that's all I got for today, folks. You have a good day. Goodbye.